What's up guys, welcome back to the Big Pink. As you saw last, last episode, we've modified our turbo, modified the housing, ported out the gate. Uh, so it's time now to get this hot side back together on the car. Um, obviously got to refill the car with, uh, with water and uh, we'll cool it and bleed it up properly and stuff. That's why I had to get it off the dyno. Uh, so we'll do this and then the plan is to chuck it back on the dyno, do another run uh, still with the same ECU in it at the moment just to see how it has affected the, uh, the actual boost control and wastegate uh, on the car. And then as long as I'm, we're happy with that, which we're pretty much gonna have to be, because there's not much else we can do about it, um, then we'll look at uh, changing over to the new ECU. So I have went and got the gaskets that I needed to get this thing back together today, which is awesome. So I got my new gaskets and I got the last thing that I needed to complete my exhaust map little Duva thing. So. <laughs> As you saw last episode, put a lot of time into making this canister, which is a bit of a filter. And this is the other thing I bought. So this is a oil gauge kit. Uh, you can buy them from most auto shops. It's just a long bit of copper tube with some uh, fittings at each end. They're sort of olive crushed up for the, the, the tube, which actually then go to 18th MPT. So as you can see, that's the deal. That's what I've made. Uh, the idea is that these coils sort of wash off a lot of the heat from the exhaust and then the canister obviously filters a lot of that through um, whatever impurities may be there and then it's just nipple off that off to your sensor and that's the idea that's how it works so we've got here just another male to male 18th MPT so that'll go into the housing then that goes into that fitting and then we're off to our map sensor so that's the idea how that's going to work uh, I have this idea that if it's not if it's still too hot by the time it's on this side of the canister through there, um, then I will put a 1.8 to a dash 4 fitting on this and use a like an actual a bit of braided line, a length of braid, um, you know, 200 series braid or something uh, in dash 4 to another nipple and uh, hopefully we'll be able to <laughs> brush off enough, enough heat through that setup. But um, I'm confident this is going to work and be all right. And uh, yeah, this will be good to finally be able to start logging some exhaust map pressure. So anyway, all up just in fittings and materials and stuff. That whole setup owes me about 25 bucks, I suppose, something like that. So a uh, pretty good little setup to have, have done and, and have now. Um, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll get this thing back together now and try and get it back on the rollers. I probably won't film much of myself actually putting this thing back together because it's a pretty boring thing. It's just putting the hot side back together. So we'll just check in once it's back on the dyno, I think. All right guys, so we're all back together. Um, I had to replace the oil drain of the turbo because this was a straight pipe that was kinked. Um, can't stress this enough to you guys, you can't have kinked oil returns for your turbos. It will back up and you'll cake the oil in your turbo and you cook it. So I had to put a molded piece in there just for the turbo uh, oil drain. Uh, apart from that, everything's pretty much ready, back together, ready to go. Just gotta whack the catch can back on. Um, we'll fill it back up with water, uh, but it's getting a bit late now, so I'm not gonna dine out this afternoon, but it'll be ready to go for the morning and we'll pick this up then. All right, guys, we're back. Spent the morning just bleeding up the cooling system, getting it all full of coolant again. And there's no leaks, obvious, so we're ready to sort of get it back on the rollers. We're gonna do maybe one, maybe two more runs with the stock ECU in it. I don't wanna keep running it with the stock ECU in it because I don't, you know, it's not a great thing to have it uh, sort of lose track of where it is. Uh, I am keeping an eye on it with the, um, the, the Plex, the knock monitor and everything like that. So it is safe, but it's just something I don't wanna keep doing. So I'll probably do one run uh, as manifold pressure, and then we'll switch over to our exhaust map and do one run like that just to get the data, and uh, then we'll let it cool down, and then I'll go through the effort, uh, go through uh, actually changing over the ECU and injectors. So let's see how much difference that gate porting made, and let's see how much pressure this thing's actually making uh, in relation to the intake pressure.
guys. So you can see here what was going on with it connected straight to the, the reference on the, on the compressor housing of the turbo. We were just getting a steady creep up to about five PSI. Now, when I had, while I had it apart, I actually adjusted the actuator arm out um, so that the arm would get the full travel of the gate as much as it could. So there's not much preload on the actual gate flap from the arm. So you can see here, I just completely disconnected the reference to the front of the Herber housing and just ran it with no gate reference attached. And you can see what was happening here. So we're coming up to sort of, you know, around that 9, 10, 11, and it's starting to taper off again down here, which is, you know, that's pretty good. Um, so what that tells me is that I need more preload on the actual actuator arm. So I'm gonna pull the actuator arm back off the flap, um, adjust it in a bit so that it's shorter, so it has a bit more preload on the flap. And then uh, once we go again, we should see um, a bit better result as far as actually coming up and then opening. Um, but this is looking promising, um, the fact that it's doing this and not stuck, stuck up here. So this could be all the difference doing a really, really decent big port job on it. So, but yeah, this is just no reference. We're coming up nice. You know, that's, that'd be very nice just to have that there, that steady boost increase up to about 11 PSI. Um, that'd be great. So, so as you guys know, in the compressor housing, we're going to see an increase in pressure faster than the rest of the intake system. That's how they're designed to, to work. So this reference off the housing is going to be seeing more pressure than my reference over there in the manifold. Uh, well, not more pressure, but it's going to be seeing that pressure earlier. So what would be happening is uh, there's not enough um, preload on the, on the actual actuator rod or the actuator arm to hold the gate flap shut. As soon as the turbo is spooling up and showing some pressure, it's allowing that to creep open and given that we've done a really decent port job, we're losing a lot of gas through there, which is a good thing. That is a really good thing. So what I'm gonna do is pull this actuator off the arm. I'm gonna shorten this up so there's actually some preload on the uh, on the wastegate actuator, on the, um, on the flap. And uh, yeah, hopefully that'll have us sorted for this. So we're a little bit better that time. Just gonna adjust it a little bit further each time until we get to a point where it's reaching a sort of a level of boost we want, but still being controlled well by the gate. And then after that, uh, from there, the boost T can take the rest of the control, but just wanna make sure that the gate has um, got enough preload on it that it's gonna control boost at, you know, to, to where we want it to be at. But yeah, as you can see, it's making more power each time where it's actually controlled boost. It's not overloading the MAF and everything's sort of going well. So uh, we'll just keep, tightening up a little bit at a time until we get to where we want to be and then that'll be that. Alright so you can see what happened that time we're starting to follow the same curve we were before albeit a little bit more controlled but you can see where that extra boost now is starting to creep into the port point where um, it, it can't flow the exhaust gas that it's creating. So um, we know that this setup will work to a degree as long as the rod's set up properly and we have our boost T set correctly. So we sort of proved that point that it's a lot better now that the gate's ported. Uh, but now that it is following the same sort of characteristic, I'm gonna take this opportunity to put the map sensor over to EMAP and uh, actually log the EMAP and see what our exhaust manifold pressure is doing when it acts this way. So uh, this will be the last run probably with the stock ECU. Um, it sort of has proven the points that I wanted it to prove. And after this, we should be able to do better with controlling fuel properly and getting it right. So we'll switch over, switch over to EMAP, see what it does. And then we've got some pretty good data to go with. So there you have it boys and girls, my little EMAP setup worked an absolute treat, worked perfectly. You can see here, um, as soon as we're getting up to a sort of 5,000 RPM running this turbo, um, it is just shoot for the sky as far as exhaust gas pressure goes. Um, but as you can see, set correctly, you can have this a little bit better controlled without these sort of spikes. So it, it looks as though sort of that around that 11 PSI limit um, is about where you sort of walk in the line where these exhaust gases are going to start to take away and uh, just go off the chart so you know that's just heading for the sky if you're if you were wanted to rev this thing out to say 775 look at that it's just going to keep going so um we've definitely proved that these turbos are just not well sized for these combos if it was on something like an rb20 um you know a stock canned rb20 with that big ported gate and everything else um you could probably get this thing to work pretty well but for an rb25 these things are just insufficient they're, they're not sufficiently sized it's just not very good and like you can even see that on the runs where we had less less boost and had this under control and had actual exhaust gas flow properly, 
um, without a massive pressure differential will make it way more power. You know, we're making 194 horsepower on six pound. Whereas running this up to sort of 16, we're only hitting 180 sort of thing because it's just, it's not flowing the air, it's not doing it. So um, that's sort of, this has been a really good experiment, particularly with this turbo. We now know that the, no matter what we do with them, because this is, you know, as we said, it's got a pretty good um, down pipe on this thing, pretty good dump. So it's not the dump pipe that is always going to be the restriction. We've proved that this turbo is very restrictive on this setup, on a stock RB25. Anyway guys, as I said, I don't want to keep running this thing up on the stock ECU. I don't like them, <laughs> uh, particularly not the way it's acting. As I stated, um, having this really rich, um, it, it doesn't help the situation, having all that fuel as well. Being really rich, you're creating a lot of exhaust gas pressure by having so much fuel in there. Um, so, you know, potentially with, with our boost T, with some decent fueling with our new ECU, and with some logging of some exhaust gas pressure, we should be able to get a really good tune on this thing regardless. Um, it will make whatever power it makes. Um, well, I'm not gonna push this thing into ridiculous exhaust gas pressure because it's not worth doing. Um, you start to rob Peter to pay Paul, you're working against yourself. So we're gonna work on now getting the new injectors and ECU in this car. I'm gonna end this video here. I'm gonna do another episode on the actual final tune with all the new components in this vehicle. Uh, I think this episode is a really good sort of indication and, and show off data and um, our experiment worked really well. So there you go, Zach, if you're watching this, throw that turbo in the bin. <laughs> We need a bigger turbo. It's, it's just, just the dump pipe's not going to fix the situation. Anyway, like I said, it's still going to be a pretty nice setup. It's just a matter of making sure we tune it correctly to what's there. Um, it just, it may not make the power we want, but we will still be able to tune it to a point where it is a nice setup that works effectively and uh, you can still have a lot of fun in this thing. So see you on the next one. We're actually putting the new ECU and injectors in this thing and putting a decent tune on it. We'll see what we can do. I'm going to keep logging this sort of data when we do do our new tunes, just that I don't want to keep running it up on the stock ECU. So. Cheers for watching guys, as always, we'll see you on the next one. Peace out, see you, bye.